Breaking the Bonds Chapter 1 Serena caught a glimpse of purple skin and armor as the Meta Guards walked into the square. Her heart skipped a beat. In Whitson, you need to have a performing license, or better not be caught without one. Run, she hissed at Mikkel as the guards turned towards their audience. Mikkel nodded and tucked the final spinning knife back into its sheath. Their juggling act was over. Pouring the coins from the hat into his pocket, he gave her a push. Left, towards the pumpkin cart. She flashed a smile at the remaining patrons. Until we meet again, she said, then spun away in a flash of coloured skirts, following Mikkel through the gap made as the crowd shifted. The market was in full swing. Carts of produce, housewares, and trinkets lined the outer edges of the town square and formed four, more or less, straight lines in the centre. Serena risked a glance over her shoulder. The guards were pushing their way through stands and customers. They were almost to the centre of the square. Here and there, a cart or a shopper would obstruct their path. She turned her attention back to her escape route and stumbled over the display of pumpkins, sending them crashing into other carts and filling the area. She turned her attention back to her escape route and stumbled over a display of pumpkins, sending them crashing into other carts and filling the area with a sweet and earthy scent. Sorry, she called back to the pumpkin seller. Mickle tossed a quarter penny in the man's direction and grabbed her arm. As they rounded the corner, she saw the pumpkin seller roll a few more of his wares into the path of the guards, who were now forcing people aside to get closer. The alley was lined with barrows. Here, the vendors were selling clothing, sausages, and small handmade toys. Serena's mouth watered at the smell of spiced meat. Mickle pulled her to a barrow, festooned with bright scarves. He grabbed a handful of cloth from the pile in the center of the display. Five pennies, he said to the woman sitting on an upturned barrel. In a rush, are you? she asked. Six, Mikkel held out his palm full of coins. Your friends are coming, the woman pointed to the commotion at the mouth of the alleyway. Serena could not see the guards yet, but she knew by the movement of the people that they were close. Damn it, how much before I have to steal them? Take them. Anyone who annoys the Duke's guards that much has earned a few scraps of cloth. The woman waved them away. Mikkel laughed and threw half the coins into the barrel. He handed a dark blue scarf to Serena, motioning her to cover her strawberry blonde curls. She felt the smooth, fine wool catch on her rough hands. As they ran, Serena watched him build his disguise. Mikkel wrapped a green scarf around his own black hair, then a long grey one around his waist. He slowed to a walk, kissing to Serena to come back. Mikkel bent and started to limp. She took his arm and whispered in his ear, "'Great idea, Grandmother.' They withdrew into a doorway and stood as though waiting for the commotion to pass. The guards struggled through the people standing at the alley entrance. Serena watched them scan the crowds, looking for a sign of her red hair, probably. She held her breath. All it would take was one vendor on the side of the guards. She watched as the woman at the barrel of scarves waved the guards over. Serena prepared herself to start running again. But Mikkel's grip on her arm tightened. Wait. This time, don't bring attention to us until it's the only option. Oh, sirs, the woman sobbed out in a loud voice. Please, I have been robbed. Woman, we are busy, the first guard growled. We have no time for your petty problems. I understand, she bowed her head. I thought you might be looking for the thieves. Two young people, a man, well, a boy, really, and a young girl. The guard stepped closer. It is possible they're the ones we search for. Oh, please, they stole my scarves. The woman sounded relieved. They took my best white scarves. They ran through there. She pointed to the open door of a butcher shop. They are trapped, then. The guard looked at his companion. Go look for them. No, you don't understand. Serena was impressed with the volume of the woman's screech. The shop has a back door. They probably went through to the next street. Good. At least you know where your loyalties should lie. The guard gestured for his companion to precede him into the doorway. Serena felt the tension release from her shoulders. The scarf seller looked towards them, winked, then turned to a man next to her. They both shifted to block the doorway. Now, Mikkel pulled Serena back into the alley. Not too fast. Remember, I'm an old lady. They limped their way back to the square. Mikkel tossed a few more coins into the barrows as he passed. I don't like this, Serena whispered to Mikkel. Can't we go faster? What if someone calls the guards back? No, 
Don't break the disguise, Mikkel muttered, tightening his grip on her arm. If there's a snitch in the crowd, they would have said something already. It's not likely they saw us change and then saved up the knowledge for later. If they wanted to benefit, they would have spoken up right away. She tried to dismiss the feeling of eyes crawling across her back. Okay, I suppose. Let's just get through this and collect our stuff from the inn. We need to get out of town, right? Let's sit for a minute, my dear, Mikkel said in a high, quavery voice. Here we can have a cup of tea and rest. Are you serious? Serena asked under her breath as Mikkel lowered himself slowly onto the chair. I need to catch my breath, dear. I'm not as young as I was, Mikkel responded. He stared at her and then whispered, An old lady wouldn't be able to cross the square without resting. I'll get us a pot of tea, Serena patted his hand and looked up for a waiter. Mikkel placed a half penny on the table and whispered, That's the last of the money we earned today. We won't be able to pay the bill at the inn. Serena ordered tea from a bored waiter and then sat beside Mikkel. Let's hope the next town isn't crawling with guards. She looked around the square. The merchants were calling their wares, all evidence of the recent disruption gone. She thought back to her life a year ago. She would have been one of the vendors, standing beside her father as he sold the leatherware they'd created over the previous month. If he hadn't tried to marry her off to Oisin van Malek, she would never have run away. Of course, if she hadn't run away, she would never have met Mikkel, and the last year of living the life of a roving entertainer would never have happened. She knew everyone thought they were lovers, but neither of them felt that way. Mikkel said his heart was with someone else, and she knew she wasn't ready for anything serious. She knew love all was ended, and it hurt even if she was the one to end it. She took a sip of tea. The bitter liquid cleared her mind. I guess we're for a hard bed under the stars tonight. You've done that before, Mikkel answered in his old woman voice. At least it's summer. Remember last winter, how we snuck into those barns? You should be happy. Tomorrow we won't stink of cow shit. Serena chuckled. You always look on the bright side. She didn't mind the hard days. The excitement of the rover's life still held her fascinated. The first time they ran out of money, she'd been surprised that Mikkel wouldn't steal to support them. She would not have stooped to theft, at least not until she was desperate. But her father had always told her that gypsies would steal anything not locked up. Mikkel had never considered stealing, even in midwinter when the forest didn't have berries or nuts for them to eat. He said Duke Tarash stole enough of the people's hard work, so he wouldn't add to the misery. She knew if they had to leave the inn without paying, Mikkel would send the money when they earned it. Trouble never lasts, Mikkel muttered through the steam rising from his cup. No point in giving it life by talking about it. Look, she released her little finger from the cup to point. They're back. The guards stomped into the square. They scanned the crowd and then took up posts again on either side of the main entrance. Hmm, looks like they've lost interest. Mikkel placed his empty cup on the table. Drink up, my dear, he said louder. We should be getting back to the inn and your father. Serena swallowed the last drops of her tea and stood, offering her hand to assist the old woman to her feet. Yes, Grandma, she said meekly. They shuffled to the alley leading to their inn. Serena tried not to look toward the guards, tried not to bring their attention. From the corner of her eye, she saw the closest guard glance at them and then dismiss them. She bent as if to say something to her grandmother, but simply patted Mikkel's arm. As she straightened, she noticed a tall man, tall and thin, the hood of his brown cloak pulled down, shading his face. He looked away as soon as their eyes met.